Um, we, uh, I'm going to call to order this meeting of the Monroe County Board of Commissioners. It is July 28th, 2021. I will note for the record that um, in addition to myself, obviously, we have uh, Commissioner Lee Jones joining by phone and uh, Penny Giffins uh, via Zoom. Um, so thank you all for being here. Uh, we'll begin with our public statement. We, the Monroe County Board of Commissioners, renew our commitment to welcome and protect the rights of all people, regardless of age, race, color, creed, disability, sexual orientation, gender, gender identity, marital status, economic status, and national origin. And we affirm the right of every person to live peacefully and without fear, and we will fight and resist at every step discrimination and harmful policies, whatever their source. We also stand in support of our public county's public school systems, both RBB and MCCSC. And with that, uh, we will go to our department updates. Um, and we will begin, of course, with the health department. Um, and we don't have Ms. Carl here, but we do have, so we're grateful to have Ms. Kathy Hewitt here. Good morning. Good morning, commissioners. Thank you for having us. Um, Penny is on a well-deserved vacation today, so I'm filling in for her. Um, she asked me to give a short update about the COVID, particularly about the new CDC guidance that was issued yesterday. Regarding our COVID cases in Monroe County, they continue a slow, steady climb. The state let us know yesterday that when the COVID county metric map is updated, Monroe County will change back to yellow from blue due to an increase in our seven day average of positive cases and our rate of cases per 100,000 residents. Last day, our seven day positivity rate was 4.56 and our weekly cases per 100,000 residents was 51, but we expect increases in both of those. Our vaccination rates have continued to climb as well. And according to statistics, 50%, 56% of those fully eligible are fully vaccinated in Monroe County. So that we truly celebrate. As far as the CDC new guidance, um, yesterday they issued new guidance on the use of face coverings due to new concerns regarding the fast growing COVID-19 Delta variant. According to the CDC, the Delta variant is much more contagious than previous versions of the virus and is spreading rapidly within the United States. Of the virus samples sequenced in Indiana, over 80% were the Delta variant, and that's up 40% from the week before. Now, the Alpha variant is still much more um, common, but the Delta variant is growing rapidly. Okay, due to this, the CDC is rec recommending that people who are in a U.S. county that is considered to have high or substantial COVID-19 transmission should wear a face covering indoors in public spaces, even if fully vaccinated, in order to maximize protection from the Delta variant and prevent possibly spreading it to others. The CDC COVID data tracker, which is available on the CDC website, um, is updated daily so people can go in and check this on a regular basis. And it lists both Monroe County and Indiana as areas of substantial COVID transmission. Now, even with the new guidance, it's important to remember that the vaccines are extremely effective against COVID-19. And according to IDOH, since January, about 98% of COVID cases in Indiana are in those who are not yet vaccinated. And if you are fully vaccinated, your odds of being hospitalized because of COVID are one in 18,795. So, and although breakthrough cases can happen, they are considered rare. Okay, the CDC also updated its guidance for schools. They are now recommending that all students, staff, teachers, and visitors, vaccinated or not, wear face coverings when inside the building, along with following other prevention measures. The, our health officer and our health board um, issued a statement, and I'll go ahead and read that as well. The Monroe County Health Officer Thomas Sharp, MD, and the Board of Health will review and assess the new guidance given by the CDC yesterday regarding updates on masking. At the present time, we support and strongly recommend following the new CDC guidance advising people in areas of substantial or high COVID-19 transmission to wear face coverings when inside among people not of their household. 
And according to the CDC COVID-19 data tracker, both Monroe County and Indiana overall are considered to be areas of substantial COVID-19 transmission. The CDC says new evidence shows that the COVID-19 Delta variant is much more transmissible than the other versions and cases have been increasing steadily the last few weeks. More cases, most cases are found in those who are not yet vaccinated. So getting the vaccine is the most important step to prevent COVID-19. Face coverings provide another layer of protection to put the brakes on the continued spread of the virus. Okay. That's all I have this morning. So thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, it's alarming news, but it's not unexpected given what's going on in the rest of the country. Uh, let's go to my colleagues and see if they have questions. Um, Commissioner Jones. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Giffins. Um, well, I'm, it's alarming that we're moving back to, to yellow, but um, yesterday we got an announcement that the Hoosier Hills Food Bank is going to be offering with the cooperation of our health department, uh, Johnson & Johnson vaccine at their next uh, Fresh Friday food distribution. That'll be on August the 6th from 10 a.m. to noon. And I know from having been out there during uh, previous food distributions that they actually surveyed some of the people coming through saying, if the vaccine were available here, would you like to you know, avail yourself of that and people indicated they would. So um, again, that's on August the 6th from 10 a.m. to noon, you can get free. <laughs> I wanna stress that that's also important because people have asked whether or not they have to pay, but uh, you can get a Johnson & Johnson COVID vaccine at Hoosier Hills Food Bank. That is really, really good news. Um, and, um, and we're really appreciative of Hoosier Hills Food Bank, not only for the Fresh Friday food distribution, but also um, planning to provide, um, working with our health department to provide the vaccine to those who wish to have it. Uh, 18 and over only, of course, for Johnson & Johnson, right? Um, yeah, and, and I'll just note for the record too, I happened to go on the CDC um, website this morning and I noticed that two of our neighboring counties are at high risk. Um, and that is uh, Lawrence County and Owen County. So it's important to remember that there are neighbors um, and those county boundaries are porous. People come in and out of Monroe County all the time. So be very careful. It is, it's really sad that we're in this position and um, hopefully um, everyone here will be safe um, um, who's, a, who's in our county. But um, but it is really a difficult situation. And I know the, the CDC had a difficult time making this decision, but they're seeing some information about viral load and thing like, things like that, <clears throat> which, which are important for even vaccinated people to know about. So um, exactly. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're following the science and that's exactly what we want them to do. So absolutely. And we're going to follow the science as well as we have throughout this pandemic and if we want this pandemic to be over, we need to get vaccinated. So please, please, please do so if you haven't done so yet. Um, do it for your family, do it for your neighbors, do it for your county, do it for your community. Um, whatever reason you need, please do so. Thank you so much, um, Ms. Hewitt, we appreciate you. Thank you, we appreciate you too as well. Thanks. All right, and with that, we will turn to Ms. Moore, Emergency Management, uh, good morning. Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Um, I would like to announce our blood drives for August. The dates are the 26th and the 27th. Both are the same time between one and seven. You can make an appointment for those blood drives at the redcross.org website. Um, that will be the last one at the convention center. We think there, we might extend it another month, but um, hopefully I'll have that information soon on where the next locations will be. We have all of the um, information regarding SBA, uh, the Small Business Administrative Assistance, on our county website under the emergency management page. So if you are an individual in the community that was affected by the June 18th and 19th flood and um, would like to see if you qualify for any assistance, you can find that information under the emergency management page. 
there is a link that you can go to to apply for a small um, a, a small business administrative loan. And if you don't qualify for that, then you can complete an application for the Indiana Disaster Relief Fund. Um, it is it, it does take a little bit of time. We've gotten lots of calls um, saying I haven't heard anything back. It takes about a two to three week process um, through for that Indiana Disaster Relief Fund. So if you were someone that did stop by um, when they were here on site and have already filled out that application and you're waiting to hear back, I encourage you just to hold off a little bit longer. It does take two to three weeks and they had several applications that came through all at once. Um, so wait that whole three weeks if you can um, before you hear back from us. I know that you're in desperate need of needing those funds. And so I apologize. That's just how the process works. Um, but if it's been more than three weeks and you haven't heard anything, feel free to contact our office and we will see if we can link you with the correct people uh, in regards to the Indiana Disaster Relief Fund. Also keep in mind, um, you cannot uh, complete an application or um attempt for the Indiana Disaster Relief Fund until you've gone through the process to see if you qualify for that SBA loan. So first do the application. There is a number on there also you can call um, if you don't want to do that application online by yourself and an individual with the Small Business Administration can walk you through that process. Um, and of course, our office is always readily available to try to assist any of those individuals uh, by helping them link to the correct numbers and, and emails and assist however is needed. So feel free to give us a call if you need help. Um, looks like our weather is going to be pretty sunny. Uh, we were thinking originally we were going to have some, some really high heats this weekend, but that's changed and it's looking that it's going to be more manageable. Um, so enjoy the sunshine um, and uh, be outside, but wear those masks if you're going to be around other people. So that's all I have today. Great, thank you so much, Ms. Moore. Let's see if there are comments or questions. Commissioner Jones? No, not at this time, thank you. Commissioner Gibbons? Uh, do you call temperatures of 91 reasonable? I gotta, I gotta ask this. We <laughs> that's don't. That's supposed to hit today, come on. I know, I know. I said earlier it was 76 out and it was so humid. I feel like it's super hot. But we don't open those cooling stations unless it, you know, unless it gets to what they consider more extreme, which is more like above the 95, 96 to 100. So and enjoy, enjoy the 91, yes. Maybe with some pool, maybe a pool cider. <laughs> some water in your hand for sure. <laughs> uh. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Moore. We appreciate you as always. All right. Um, and next we will hear from Ms. Ridge um, Highway. Good morning. Good morning. Um, we are finishing up paving down on Ketchum Road area. Um, hopefully we will be done with that in the next day. Um, we are going to, I know uh, it is going to cool off this weekend and that's great. Um, I did, we did kind of monitor the weather for tomorrow and uh, it has Bloomington as 93, I believe, 97, I think. Um, so we're, we're we're not gonna have our paver going tomorrow. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot hotter on the back of that paver than just 93 degrees out. So uh, we'll do some smaller things with the crews just to keep them safe and uh, keep them with plenty of water. Um, other than that, we're just busy doing our normal uh, patching and uh, tree trimming and brush and um, painting. Excellent. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, comments, questions? Commissioner Jones? No, I don't. Commissioner Giffins? Um, I was out on um, old State Route 37 yesterday, the eastern part in the highway, and the repaving there is just wonderful and the striping. Um, Wow, good job. It turned out really, really well. So we're, uh, we're th thrilled with the paving that we're getting done this year. And some of it we contracted out to be able to try and get more done with our in-house crews and um, contracting out to the roads that are a little bit farther away from our facilities takes a lot more hauling. But when you can subcontract that out, there's more trucks, more availability and uh, and uh, more time savings for those jobs. But yeah, they did a great job on that. So thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, we appreciate you as always and the crews who are working hard in the hot, hot sun. Um, thank you. And let's see uh, if there are any other department heads who wish to offer an update today. Just 
raise your hand on the Zoom screen if you do. I do not see any. Okay. And so with that, we will turn to public comment. Public comment uh, is for items uh, that is, are not um, on our agenda. And the public is invited to um, a three minute time period to offer their uh, commentary and insight. And um, at two minutes and 30 seconds, you will hear a tone. Thank you so much. And when you hear that tone, that means you have 30 seconds left to wrap up your comments. Um, the same uh, three minute time limit applies to all of our agenda items, even if there's only one uh, or two. Uh, so <laughs> with that, let's see if there are any, if any members of the public who wish to offer uh, comments. Just simply raise your hand. Okay, I do not see any. And so with that, we will move on to our next agenda item. Move approval of the minutes for July 20, 21st, 2021. Second. We have a motion and um, we have a second. Any comments, uh, suggestions, or edits? No, I don't. No. no. All right, seeing none. Um, Mr. Cockrell, will you please call the roll on the approval of minutes for July 21st, 2021? Uh, Commissioner Thomas. I'm going to abstain because I have not watched the meeting yet. <laughs> Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Giffins. Yes. Motion approved, two ayes and one abstention. Thank you so much. And we'll move on to the next item, please. Move approval of the claims docket accounts payable July 28, 2021, and payroll July 30th, 2021. Second. We have a motion and we have a second and we have Mr. Miller standing by. Good morning. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, the total for claims was $2,188,042.25. $760,724 was for Comerica Bank and Trust for the 2021 sheriff pension payment. $235,151.43 was for First Financial Bank uh, for the garage principal and interest payment. And $720,000 was for City of Bloomington for the 2021 interlocal agreement payment for Central Dispatch. As far as payroll is concerned, the total was $1,744,000. $855.71. Uh, there was a slightly higher direct cost amount this payroll due to approximately $118,000 worth of a supplemental pay, uh, which was slightly higher, of course, due to second installment of uniforms for our sheriff, jail, and highway departments. Excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, comments, questions? Commissioner Jones? No, I don't. Commissioner Gibbons? No, but thank you for um, reminding us that part of the, the increase was for the uniforms. That, Absolutely. That's great. Uh, thank you so much. And let's see if there's any public comment on this item. Um, just raise your hand at the bottom of the Zoom screen. And I do not see any. So with that, Mr. Cocker, will you please call the roll on accounts payable July 28, 2021 and payroll July 30th, 2021. Uh, Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Giffins. Yes. Motion is approved three to zero. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. All right. I will note for the record that we have received a report from the clerk of the circuit court, and that is a report from June of 2021. And now we move on to our massive uh, new business agenda. I say um, sarcastically because we have one item. Uh, item A, please. Move to approve ratification of INDOT Amendment Number Two for East Lawrence Water Authority, Fund Name Hunters Creek Road, Phase Two and Three, Fund Number Eighty One Sixty Three, in the amount of six million nine hundred fifty three five hundred seventy seven dollars and fifty four cents. Second. 
We have a motion and a second. Ms. Ridge, good morning again. Morning. Uh, so this amended contract is for our Hunters Creek Road project, phase two and three. Um, when we did the original utility plans, the costs have gone up um, for the East Lawrence Water Authority. The increase of the amount of the materials is $86,470. Um, and NDOT has included this full amount into their construction cost for the project. So that's why we are amending the NDOT LPA contract to include these additional costs for the utility relocations. Great, thank you so much. I will notice that the increase uh, in materials is $86,470, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. It's not actually the entire six million plus. That we're no, paying. that's the, what the total contract the total, is right. for the construction of that project. So it's adding that amount to this. Great, excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, comments, questions, Commissioner Jones? No, we heard about this in our work session last week and while it's a bit convoluted because the stage is also involved, um, done, it seems pretty straightforward in spite of that. Right. Commissioner Giffins? Yeah, we're, we're happy that this project is moving forward quickly. Yeah, and I would say that is the, the good news here for sure, uh, and that INDOT's covering it, which is even better. Um, all right, uh, with that, let's see if there's any public comment on this item. Just raise your hand on the Zoom screen. I do not see any. Uh, so with that, Mr. Cockrell, will you please call the roll on the ratification of in-doubt amendment number two for East Lawrence Water Authority? Uh, Commissioner Thomas? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Giffins? Yes. Motion is approved three to zero. Okay, thank you so much. All right, uh, we don't have any appointments today, but we do have some announcements. Um, uh, for um, those of you who are interested, we are <clears throat> accepting applications uh, for boards and commissions. And um, those include um, affordable housing, economic development and drainage board among others. So it would be really helpful to have um, uh, your application in at co.monroe.im.us. We can look at past meeting minutes um, and understand more about what those uh, important boards and commissions do. And of course, we're always collecting those applications because we always seem to have an opening here or there. Um, I would ask at this point for technical services to go ahead and um, re- um, put that uh, image back up that we have at the PowerPoint slide, if you would, please. Um, so we have, uh, last night, the Baker Tilly consultants came in uh, to the council meeting and offered a report um, on their findings on annexation and the fiscal impact. Uh, their focus was on a lot on the um, governing uh, taxing units, government taxing units and the impact there including Monroe County with some startling information. Um, and I will note that we have uh, public information meetings coming up with um, Baker and Tilly Consultants um, beginning tonight at uh, 6 p.m. at Old State Road 37 Fire Station, which is at 5081 North Old State Road 37. Um, that meeting will be available um, via Zoom. Just go to our county website. Um, in addition, um, Sunday's meeting at the fairgrounds is at 2 p.m. That is an in-person meeting only. We do not have the Zoom capabilities there. Uh, so if you want to attend that one, you need to show up. Please wear a mask. Uh, and uh, Monday, uh, August 2nd at 6 p.m. at the Kennedy Drive Fire Station. Uh, that one is also a hybrid meeting in person or via Zoom. We have um, um, information available on our website um, including a uh, income, uh, tax calculator uh, for property taxes that you can utilize. Um, if you are targeted for annexation, you can utilize this um, uh, little Excel spreadsheet tool that Baker Tilly created, which is pretty awesome. And that will help you determine how much more your taxes may be. Um, granted, it is focused on um, the current situation. Um, and 
um, we um, would um, would say that um, there's still some good uh, value there, even if it's not going to give you what's going to happen in uh, 2024. Um, but it is um, a great tool. And um, we also have other information on annexation available on our website for those of you who uh, would like it. So we do encourage people to attend remotely when possible. Uh, tonight's meeting um, at Old State Road 37 Fire Station and the Monday night meeting at Kennedy Drive Fire Station. So if you can um, appear via Zoom, we'll still take your questions. These information sessions are really geared toward the public, less so the taxing units, um, which was last night's presentation. So um, your questions will be taken either way, whether via Zoom or in person, but given the COVID situation locally, it would be beneficial to have you attend via Zoom if possible. Um, but again, we expect everyone there to wear a mask, please. Um, all right. And um, I will also note that on July 7th, we, um, the Board of Commissioners extended, uh, with the help of the Council, the Township Assistance Fund uh, to um, help residents who are struggling to make ends meet as a result of COVID. Um, so it could be help with um, rent utilities or other necessities. Um, and that um, will be in place through the end of the uh, governor's emergency order. Um, so if you need assistance, please contact your township trustee. Every resident of the county has a township trustee, whether they live in the city, um, a town or outside of those. So please contact your trustee. Um, for further <clears throat> information and to apply. Um, and with that, I will see if my colleagues have anything else to add. Um, as uh, I will note, as uh, Commissioner Giffins pointed out, the Hoosier Hills Food Bank um, on Industrial Drive uh, has a Fresh Friday food distribution every other Friday and Friday, August 6th from 10 to noon. Uh, you can also get vaccinated. Uh, this is the one-time shot Johnson & Johnson, 18 and over only, no appointment necessary. Uh, the food drive itself goes from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And a few of us will be there, as always, <laughs> just helping with the distribution. It's a great, it's a great event, uh, but it still shows us that there are people in need. Uh, anything to add, uh, Commissioner Jones? No, I don't. Commissioner Giffins? Um, just two quick things. I want to congratulate Lisa Ridge and the entire uh, highway department for completing the Profile Parkway roundabouts. Uh, it was a pleasure to be out there last week and also to thank Mike Kornman and the Ellettsville Fire Department. Um, they, uh, they took Ms. Ridge and me on a ride in their bucket <laughs> on, the, on the truck and to be able to see those roundabouts from the air was, was phenomenal. Um, I also just wanted to comment on something that we heard last night from Baker Tilly. And in their analysis, they compared what your current tax, property taxes would be um, without annexation and then with annexation. So you can compare current to current. And I think that that is really a reasonable way to go because we're not assuming anything about increased um, assessed value, what growth would be, anything. So you can just sit there and compare today's dollars with today's dollars and your today's income with, with what, you know, what an impact um, annexation would have on you if it were to happen today. So I really appreciated their approach. Uh, it seemed very transparent and, and very easy to follow. Great. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, and with that, um, we will adjourn this meeting. Um, is everyone okay with coming back at 1040 for our uh, work session? Yes. yes. Excellent. So we will uh, come back at 1040. Uh, for our work session. And with that, this meeting is adjourned. Thanks everyone, get vaccinated. <laughs>